Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time. My name is Sheridan Coldstream, and by day I'm a vocal and performance and singing coach, but this channel is devoted to helping people feel better about themselves, and that's all I want to do. And today is ridiculously exciting, because for the first time I've got a guest speaker who's going to share the screen with me, and when you hear who that guest speaker is, you'll just be just slightly excited. So please stay with me on this one. We talk lots about confidence, about self-esteem, about the need for validation, about self-love, about self-worth, about perfectionism, about feeling crap and all these things. But I want to go back to the point, the point in my life that's kind of 10, 12 years ago, I think now, that completely changed everything. Because people sometimes say to me, oh, you're a confidence coach. You must be really confident then. And I go, actually, no, it's kind of the opposite, you know. And, uh, and I think all that really qualifies me to do what I do in my job is knowing that I haven't always been confident. I, you know, I, I grew up feeling like a bit of a failure. I grew up feeling permanently inadequate, feeling bad about myself, negative comparisons with everybody else. Everybody else was better than I was. And I was always somehow just not enough uh, and therefore not very happy because that didn't make me feel very good. And as I say, I, I think it's about 12 years ago, I met two of the most influential people in my life to date, and they were Liz Ivory and Richard Wilkins. Richard Wilkins is an inspirational speaker. He is a author internationally uh, and has literally helped thousands of people change their lives by discovering their true identity, their best selves, and debunking, if you like, their mistaken identity. And the way that they have done this, I'm just going to give you a very, very brief uh, explanation of, of the philosophy behind what they help and teach. And then I'm going to hand over to Richard, which is which is just crazy exciting. So here's some basic questions for you. Would you rather feel happy or miserable? Would you rather feel like a success or like a failure? You don't have to answer these, just have a think in your head. Would you rather feel confident or not confident? Would you rather feel like a winner or a loser? Would you rather feel like a good person or a bad person. I'll stop there, you kind of get the idea. Now I would suspect, well I can't obviously speak for you, that most of you would answer yes to the good feeling. You would want to feel, you would choose to feel the good thing. You'd choose to feel a success. You'd choose to feel like a good person. You'd choose to feel happy. So why are we doing the other one so often then? So, so if we choose to feel good, then why do we feel bad? Why are we beating ourselves up? Why are we feeling inadequate? Why are we feeling we're not good enough? Why are we feeling those feelings if we would always choose the other feeling? Well, there can be only one answer for that. And the answer is, if you're not feeling the way you would choose to feel, then you're not choosing. Then what is? Then what is choosing? And this is what Richard and Liz identified so beautifully and packaged in this most wonderful, accessible course that they've called Broadband Consciousness. And what Broadband Consciousness taught me all those years ago was that when we're born, well, we're born perfect, but when we're born, we are handed a script, a metaphorical life script. There you go. Let's make this real. Here's my metaphorical, here's my life script. And on page 33, it says, if someone's horrible to you, then that just confirms that you're completely useless. Okay, that's fine. Uh, page 55, paragraph B uh, says, yes, your brothers are more intelligent than you are, and therefore you are a failure. And so on. And our script forms the reference point on which we bounce every thought, reaction, thought process, and everything we feel is based on running the life that happens to us past this script. And what Richard and Liz have done so brilliantly is they've devised a way of helping you separate from your script, thus debunking your mistaken identity and realizing your true self-worth. And at this point, I'm going to hand over, I'm terribly excited about this for a few minutes, to, as I say, international author, speaker, and 
definitely one of the most inspirational people you will ever meet. Here is Richard Wilkins. Over to you, Richard. Hi guys, my name is Wiz Wilkins and Sheridan has kindly invited me to speak to you for just a couple of minutes about the script. So what is the script? Where did the whole idea come from? Well, the script we've got here, the script is the negative voice that we've all got in our head, right? This metaphoric script, it's stored in here. And the whole point is that we didn't write this, we inherited it. And we inherited this not by what people said to us. They didn't say all bad things or negative things to us. What happened was, when we were young, the biggest form of education is observation. And we watch people around us and we copy. That's how we learn. And we watch what people were doing. And really, what people are doing out there at the minute, they're playing small, right? They don't see themselves as real-life superheroes. A great example is... You, everyone that you, that you meet says that they will hold on to a criticism longer than a compliment. One of the things I do, I enjoy my future before it happens. And people say, don't be so stupid. You can't enjoy your future before it happens. Yet if you ask those same people, do you ever worry about your future before it happens? They do it all the time. So what's stopping us, right, enjoying our future before it happens, instead of worrying about it. Why don't we do it? One makes you feel terrible, the other makes you feel great. The reason we don't do it is the script. And this is what it do, this controls us. Right? And most people think the negative voice in their head is who they are. That's why when they're struggling, they go on medication, they go into therapy, when in actual fact it's the script. And like Sheridan says, that he did our BC course, this course that we run, and he realized that the script wasn't him, that negative voice in his head. Now, here's the bad news. The bad news is you can't get rid of the script. It's there. It's always there. The really, really good news is you can ignore it. You can ignore all of it. Because if you don't feel good, if you have a feeling that doesn't make you feel good, that's the script. Because we would always choose to feel good. And the whole point is that if you don't choose how you feel, this will. And this is what's causing all the problems. You know, I've never said to anyone, you know that negative voice in your head? And they've never gone to me, no, I don't know what you mean. Everyone knows what I mean when I explain about the script and the negative voice in the head. This is what causes the civil war in between our ears. It's the real us against the script. Now, everything is in the, that's in the script is negative. Everything in here is what you don't want, you don't like, and wouldn't choose. And the real you is simply you minus the script. That's who you really are. It's you minus the script. So uh, if you ever wondered who you really are, now you know. And remember, if you don't choose, that negative voice will, but it's not you. And the work that we do and what we did with Sheridan, like I said, you can't, don't start trying to rewrite the script or fight the script. You just learn to ignore it. It becomes an opinion you no longer value. So when that script goes, yeah, 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 to you, and you, what, you feel your energy drop, saying, I don't believe you anymore. You're an opinion that I no longer value. Hope this has worked. Hope it's good for you, Sheridan. Love you all. Remember, keep choosing. If you don't choose, the script will. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Richard, for that. That's absolutely fantastic. So what this all comes down to then is a question of choice in choosing how you feel because you've got the hardware inside you now to feel the way you would choose to feel. Let me give you one example. Imagine you just had a letter saying that you've won two million pounds on the lottery. Imagine that feeling, the, the relief, the sense of no more financial worry, the, the excitement that they're looking forward to celebrating the holiday you might plan to book almost immediately, only to find out that actually the letter had been sent to you by mistake. Does that lessen the feeling that you felt while you believed you had actually won the lottery? So the hardware is in you already to feel the way you would choose to feel, even if the feeling is based on something entirely different. So the key here is in noticing how you feel and asking yourself, 
would I choose to feel this way? Because if I wouldn't choose to feel this way, then I'm not choosing in guess what is, the script, that little negative voice in your head. So that, that's, that's the point for today, and I'm very excited to be able to pass that on to you. And that brings us to the end of this video. But if you've enjoyed this video, please, please, please comment below, give it a like. And if you wanna hear more of what I've got to say about feeling better more of the time, then please subscribe to my channel. But it seems only appropriate to finish on a quote of Richard Wilkins, and I love this. And this is simply this. Our greatest frustration in life is not that we don't know what to do. It's knowing exactly what to do and still not doing it. Thank you very much. See you soon.